Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Thursday the 3rd of September 2020 and on Tuesday we published a video entitled Gold Reaches for $2,000 and Silver Aims for $29. And on Monday, inflation may not push up precious metal prices quite as soon as one thinks. Where we pointed out that those expecting runaway inflation, leading to hyperinflation, anytime soon, may in fact find themselves somewhat disappointed, especially after the recent reports from Europe that in fact deflation is more of a worry for now. And also not to get too carried away with the recent rise in gold and silver prices this week, as there may indeed be some further consolidation ahead, depending on the economic data being published during the course of this week. Now, we've placed links to both of these videos in the description box below. Now, today, the headlines we're covering essentially talks about gold, but really, as it's acting as the lead precious metal at the moment, as we are expecting at least for now that to be the position for silver to follow in gold's path, particularly since silver recently having gained quite considerably on gold, certainly over the last few days, if not the last couple of weeks, we envisage gold now leading the way and silver reacting even more positively if it goes up or more negatively if it goes down. So yesterday, Bloomberg published two interesting articles, one highlighting that gold is a bad predictor of inflation, which ties into our inflation uh, video, and the second highlighting that moving into a US election in November, investors may very well consider moving out of equities and placing what will then be liquid cash into gold, and of course silver, if only as a protective measure. Now we shall take a brief look at both of these articles, which are very short. Bloomberg article, dated September 2nd, 2020, headline, Gold is a terrible predictor of inflation, Bank of England's Vlieger says. Bank of England policymaker Gert Jan Vlieg warned that it's a terrible idea to look at gold prices as a predictor of inflation. Investors have piled into bullion this year, pushing the price up 30%, amid speculation that massive government spending worldwide to counter the coronavirus shock will push inflation higher. But Vlieg, a former Deutsche Bank AG bond strategist, told UK lawmakers on Wednesday that the record high price of gold tells you precisely nothing. Policymakers are instead looking at surveys and financial market measures of inflation expectations, he said. Those have been rising and are now at more comfortable levels consistent with the central bank's 2% target. UK inflation accelerated to 1% in July, the fastest in four months, but economists predict that will be short-lived. If you look at previous episodes where the gold price is very elevated, you realise very quickly that gold is a terrible predictor of inflation, Vleek said. In a separate written testimony to lawmakers, he said there is a material risk that it will be several years before the Bank of England hits its target. Bloomberg article dated September 2nd, 2020. Headline, Fund that beat 82% of its peers sees gold as safe election play. The Dynamic Precious Metals Fund which beat 82% of its peers this year, sees gold as a nice, safe bet heading into the US election in November, according to portfolio manager Robert Cohen. The precious metals-focused fund climbed 63% this year by mainly investing in gold and silver-exposed equities, beating most of its peers, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Dynamic Funds is a subsidiary of Bank of Nova Scotia. Aside from COVID-19 uncertainties, the US election is probably the most contentious US election since the Civil War, which will likely destabilise the US market briefly, regardless of who wins, Cohen said. I'm not sure how heavily I want to be invested heading into that election he said, adding that gold would be a safe bet. Investors have flocked to safe haven assets amid massive central bank stimulus and lower real interest rates, 
sending gold surging to record levels this year. Bullion hit an all-time high in August before falling sharply. This roller coaster ride had some market participants speculating that gold could be a bigger bubble than surging tech stocks. Amid this volatility, the Toronto-based fund has outperformed the gold price and the S&P TSX Composite Gold Index this year. Cohen's fund manages risk by investing in a diverse range of precious metal equities, including producers, developers and explorers from different regions of the world, rather than just picking a bunch of producers off by market cap. Cohen also thinks this strategy is one of the reasons why his fund's risk is better managed than its peers. Our down capture ratios are superior to our peer group because of where and what we invest in, Cohen said. The fund has about 745 Canadian dollars. I repeat that, has about 745 million Canadian dollars in assets under management, according to Bloomberg data. Looking forward, Cohen thinks gold's bullish sentiment is here to stay due to some very impactful events around the world, including the devaluation of currencies. Given the amount of debt in the world, the only political acceptable way to get out of debt is to literally print your way out of it, which effectively devalues the currency, and we're going to see that continue, Cohen said. In such a scenario, putting money in a safe haven asset such as gold ensures stable purchasing power for the longer term, Cohen added. Now currently, both gold and silver have fallen back today, and a Reuters report published a little over half an hour ago puts the position into context. So let's take a look at that one. Again, it's a very short report. Reuters article dated September 3rd, 2020 at 1.36 p.m. GMT plus one. Headline. Firmer dollar equities push gold to near one week low. Gold prices dipped to a near one week low on Thursday, weighed down by a stronger dollar and as growing hopes of an economic recovery bolstered risk appetite. Spot gold was down by half a percent at $1,932.73 an ounce at 12.05 GMT, having earlier fallen to $1,926.99. US gold futures dipped 0.3% to $1,938.70. Gold is turning its eye more strongly to the US dollar relationship and the rally of the dollar has clearly taken a little bit of the shine away from gold, said independent analyst Ross Norman. The dollar index rose for a third straight session against its rivals, making gold expensive for holders of other currencies. Meanwhile, European shares hit an over one-month high. Bolstering bets for recovery from a pandemic-induced economic slump, an industry survey showed recovery in China's service sector activity extended into a fourth straight month in August. But underlying themes, like rising virus cases in the United States, low to negative government bond yields, and unprecedented monetary and fiscal stimulus, remain intact, and this continues to limit gold's losses, said FXTM analyst Lukman Ontunuga. In the near term, gold may remain in a wide range with support around 1910, that's $1,910, and resistance around 1985. Investors now await the initial weekly U.S. jobless claims report due later in the day, as well as U.S. payroll figures on Friday, for cues on the health of the world's largest economy. The Federal Reserve, in its Beige Book report, highlighted that U.S. business activity and employment ticked up through late August, but economic growth was generally sluggish as COVID-19 hotspots hampered reopening. Gold has gained over 27% so far this year, helped by ultra-loose monetary policy adopted by major central banks to combat the economic damage caused by the pandemic. Elsewhere, silver fell 1.7% to $27.02 an ounce, while platinum fell 0.4% to $902.48 per ounce. Palladium rose 3.8% to $2,333.48 per ounce, having hit its highest since April the 1st. End of article. Now, as a further update, the time is 1421 GMT plus one. Gold stands at $1,938 and silver at $27.24.
both well within the trading ranges we forecast in our Saturday Gold and Silver Weekly update. Now the Dow Jones is up some 454 points at 29,100 and both the S&P 500 and Nasdaq is showing gains of 1.5 and 1% respectively. European markets are up between half a percent and 1.5% and the dollar index is attempting to reach 93 and is currently just shy of that figure at 92.92. So the, the weekly jobless claims report has in fact been announced, obviously post the Reuters report, and it shows figures of 881,000, which is an improvement on last week's 1.01 million. The trade deficit for July is a little worse than expected and stands at minus 63.6 billion compared with the previous month's minus 53.5 billion. Productivity for quarter two, though, is up at 10.1%, compared with expectations of around 8.1%. So we're witnessing a degree of consolidation in gold and silver prices due to these relatively favourable economic figures, together with, of course, some profit-taking as a result of earlier gains at the start of this week. Now, tomorrow we have the non-farm payrolls, and these should provide further positive results bearing in mind the weekly jobless claims already mentioned and an improvement in the ADP employment report, which was announced on Wednesday. That's yesterday. Now, unless the COVID-19 pandemic gets truly out of hand, one would expect to see October's financial data also providing positive results. And they will be viewed just prior to the November presidential elections. But that said... With President Trump currently trailing Biden by 7 to 10 percent in many states, some including the key marginals, there will be some uncertainty as we approach that election in early November. So as Bloomberg highlighted, we could see equity markets peak before then, maybe even, even possibly to all-time highs, and then fall back again. We shall for sure, though, ourselves be taking advantage of any pullbacks in gold and silver prices prior to that election, as we are envisaging some further rises in those prices, if not just before the election takes place, then after the result is known. Now, what do you think? Please do share your thoughts. And before we go, we did promise to produce a video on gold and silver pumpers, but we literally ran out of time yesterday, which is why we failed to produce a video at all. But this is still in the works, and hopefully it will be released very soon indeed. Thank you so much for listening, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Not forgetting to press that bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.